Hey everyone, Jake Sloan back with a second suit up video because my setup has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years. It's simpler and it's quite a bit different now and so I wanted to show you how you can do it. And I have much better equipment and much better lighting and so you can see and hear everything in glorious detail. Stay tuned to the end of the video if you wanna find out how you can build a costume like this one and join the 501st Legion and join our charity work around the world as we share our love of Star Wars. And now let's get into the video. Okay, everyone, so following a good pre-troop checklist is important, making sure your batteries are good, everything's working, everything's plugged in, it saved me on more than one occasion. And then making sure, of course, you have everything. Gloves can be forgotten. I wouldn't know that from experience or anything like that, but here, there we go. So I wear Under Armour heat gear underneath everything. Um, it helps protect my leather suit. It helps keep me more comfortable to a degree. And then putting the pants on and the boots, of course, doesn't take very long. Next is the shins. I use the silver Sharpie to write left and right or L and R on mine. Uh, the way you can tell the two apart is the right shin is taller. If you're ever wondering. Next I do the microphone and the balacava because that's the way I do it. I wear a balakov all the time because uh, it helps keep kids from seeing me underneath the suit when they come and peer from um, up the chin vent or it also gives me really cool hat hair after a troop which is really important. It also helps keep the microphone in place um, when I'm putting the helmet on and off so balakov is good. Next is the jacket. I went from a one-piece to a two-piece. I really like the two-piece. It affords a lot more range of motion and is a lot more comfortable to wear overall. So if you're thinking about a one-piece or a two-piece, I would highly recommend a two or three-piece. It's also a little more forgiving in the measurement department in case you don't get perfect measurements. Although sometimes you need a little bit of the force to get this thing started and get it all the way up your back. Sometimes it just doesn't quite want to cooperate, but that's why you troop with other people. People that like you and don't mind helping you out for stuff. All right, then I take the uh, wire from this and the top of the suit has a little Velcro collar. I usually tuck the wire in somewhere in there. Tuck it in the Velcro, the little slack and then Velcro over the top of it, just it helps keep the mic from getting pulled around too much during the rest of the suit process and when you're moving around uh, outside. After that, cod piece. Cod piece uh, for this style suit kind of helps to hold the jacket down a bit because it straps right over the bottom edge of the jacket. Kind of grab it and pull it all down together. And then chest box. It is totally, totally possible to suit up by yourself um, in five to seven minutes or so once you get it down. All right, there we go. And of course, you can do a loop around the neck, like just a straight up loop. I don't like the way it looks as much because it loses some of this sort of uh, V look with these straps here which I think is important to replicating the look of Dave Prowse in a &H, Return of the Jedi or um, Empire Strikes Back. After that it's time for the first layer of wool. Yay! Start to get a little bit warmer. The robe goes on just like that. And then over the top of the robe goes the belt box. Belt and belt boxes. I use a strip of Velcro on the back of the belt. And then, um, come on, there we go. And then I try and clamp the robe down in a little bit. So there we go. 
keep the belt, you want it to stay tight against the top of the cod, not riding down over the top of the cod, or, or the front of the cod, you just want it on top a bit. And then it's nice because you can kind of pull the robe all out and get it situated where you want. You want to keep the robe lined up with the front edge of the boxes here, and then pull it apart up here a little bit to get that sort of V-shape and show off that massive Vader physique. Uh, after that, if I'm not going with a bladed saber, hang this on my belt, and then grab my voice system, plug the microphone in, turn that on, flip that all around to the back side, and I just Velcro it on my belt. Just like that. Hasn't failed me in about 100 troops doing it that way, so I don't see any reason to stop or change it now. And every now and then I do gotta retuck my balakava in so it keeps my neck hidden. So after that, because I do this myself, I put the armor on after I put the cape on. If I have somebody around who can help me or who's tall enough to help me, then I'll do it the other way around. It's a little easier. But by myself, it works just fine. Grab the robe or the cape, get the chain on this way. And then attach the other hook. Kind of make sure it's sort of set. Grab the armor. Because I have the transducer sound system, I will do another video about that soon, about my Vader sound system. It has this little wire that hangs off the back. I don't worry too much about it. I just put the armor on underneath my cape like that. Pull the cape chain up and attach it. Get it sitting about where it needs to go. And then grab this wire and just flip it around the back side of my shoulder and it goes back easily. Then, of course, grab the voice system. I have just enough wire on the microphone and, oops, to be able to see and plug everything in together. Move that out of the way. So I kind of do a final last check here, making sure everything's sort of straight, lined up, turn boxes on, chest box on, a little hard to see in this light, pull the cape around where I about, about where I want it, which is probably a little more somewhere in there, kind of line up like so it's hitting here on the armor so you can see that, how it hits. And then I grab my gloves. because nobody likes fingerprints on Vader's helmet. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like, and if you enjoy these types of videos and the other videos that I posted, then subscribe to my channel because there's more to come. If you're interested in developing a costume similar to mine to join the 501st Legion, then you should find out what detachment covers your costume and join that detachment forums. There's no better place in the world to get information about how to develop a great movie screen accurate costume than the forums that the 501st Legion has. In my case, it's the Sith Lord Detachment, which is at 501stsithlords.com. Great information there for all the different Sith Lords from the movies. Probably the biggest storehouse of information about Darth Vader's costume there is. I spent a year researching it. I spent about two years putting it together, and a costume like mine will cost you between $2,000 and $5,000. So it's not for the faint of heart, but it definitely is rewarding, especially when we go out and bring joy to people, especially kids, as we 
do in my other videos as part of the 501st Alaskan Outpost here in Anchorage, Alaska. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon on the next video. Okay, I think we got it. I think we're good. Time to get this off because I'm sweating a lot already. I'm really, really sweating quite a bit. You got the air conditioning on, it's still hot. That's what I get for picking a costume with a bunch of layers of wool.